How many of you set a goal last year and did absolutely nothing about it? How many of you? <laughs> All right, thank you. How many of you set another one this year but don't understand what you do about it? How many of you? All right, thank you. I believe I'm in the right place. My name is Bankoli Banjo, and the first thing I want to do is acknowledge every single one of you for being here. Now, there's a saying in life which says 80% of all successes is just by people showing up, and that's what you all have done. So I want you to please tap the person closest to you on the back and say congratulations for being here. Congratulations. <laughs> all right, thank you. Now, the next thing I want to do is appreciate your time. I know you all might have a whole lot of other things to do, but you decided to give me your time today. I want to say a big thank you, and I promise to do everything within my own power to make certain that your time here with me is well spent. Is that fair enough? Yes. All right, thank you. Now, usually when I have speaking engagement like this one, I usually have two rules. How many rules, please? Two. All right, rule number one, and this is a very important rule. I want to write this down. Rule number one, do not believe a word I say. <laughs> so you might want to ask, why would I even suggest that, right? It's because everything I'm going to be sharing with you is from my own experience. It doesn't make it right and it doesn't make it wrong. It doesn't make it true and it doesn't make it false. It just makes it my experience. But then again, this same information I'm about to share with you completely transform my own life and career. Now, if you learn it, and most importantly, if you use it, I believe it will change yours too. Now, how many of you are willing and open to try this information in your life? How many of you? All right, thank you. Now, when you try it, whatever works, you can continue to use it. And whatever doesn't, you're welcome to what? Throw it away. Now, as for rule number two, how many of you are willing to get the most out of this speaking engagement? How many of you are willing to learn faster? How many of you are willing to remember more what you've learned? <laughs> all right, thank you. Now, research also shows that the key to achieving all of this is by participation. What's the word, please? Participation. Thank you. Participate in whatever we're going to be having here today, all right? Now, a wise man also once said, the things you hear, you tend to forget them. The things you see, you tend to remember. But the things you do, you tend to understand. Now, understanding is key in every single thing we do in this life. The moment you understand how something works, you can always, always still tweak it and still get the best of results. True or true? True. In life, there are three stages to change. Number one is awareness. Number two is understanding. And then number three is reconditioning. Awareness is when you become conscious of what is going on around you. That is why we are here. You all understand that something is missing in what I'm doing, and I need to learn more, right? Number two, which is the most important, is understanding why you need to change things for you. Why you need to switch from whatever you think you're feeling inside of you that is not giving you the kind of result that you want, right? Now, all of the information, before I get to reconditioning, all of the information that we dish out today, every single result that we get today, comes from the way we think about our life, the way we think about the situation around us, the way we think about our experiences in life. Well, where do these things come from? Come from our beliefs. Where do your beliefs come from? Come from the things you've seen, heard, and experienced whilst we're growing up. Every single one of us have different experiences in life. Every single one of us have different beliefs in life. You can be on the same table, and we're talking about business, but we all have individual beliefs of how business should run. A whole lot of people have written different kinds of books according to their own beliefs of how things are supposed to be. Some people will tell you you need to wake up. If you want to be a business person, you need to wake up at 4 a.m. Some people will say wake up at 9 a.m. Right? It's according to their own what? Beliefs. Let me give an example. Right? One of my trainers said this. He said each time they are having Thanksgiving, that his wife usually caught the two sides of the turkey before putting it in the oven to bake. So one year he got curious and then asked, why do you keep cutting this? Now she now said that she saw her own mom do the same thing. And that's why she also is doing it. And I said, okay. And I called the mother. I then asked that. I've seen your daughter do this a couple of times. Why? She said she saw it from you. Why? She also now said she saw it from her own mother. Do the same thing. So good. Thankfully, the grandmother was still alive. She now called the grandmother. And then asked that. I've seen your daughter and your granddaughter do the same. She now said that back then, the pan she had was small. And then she had to cut the two sides of the turkey before the turkey can fit in for putting it in the oven. Now, imagine the amount of things that we also have seen. We never ask questions. And then we believe that that is the way it's supposed to be. And then we act upon it. Imagine the amount of things that we heard people say. And then we believe it. And then we act upon it. Imagine the amount of things that we experience, especially, especially in Nigeria here. 
you wake up and every single person is telling you, every single person around you is telling you the country is bad, everything is bad, everything is bad, everything is bad. But then again, you wake up and see some people celebrating <laughs> in the same environment. So what exactly do you want to believe? How do you channel your thoughts to create the kind of result that you want? Your thoughts will lead to the way you feel. That feeling will lead to the action you take. And eventually, it's going to produce the result that you get. Now, if you create thoughts, right, that are not supportive to your beliefs, it makes you feel horrible. And then what do you do? You don't take action. Now, she said, right, she looked at the environment. Business is not coming. She creating the thoughts of what is going on. I'm losing money. Now she's feeling frustrated, leading to the action that she's taking. And eventually, he's telling from the result that she's getting in her own body. But if that thought should have changed, probably would have changed from, what is it I do not know that is not making me get this money? Who do I need to speak to? What do I need to learn? When you're not getting the kind of result that you want, it simply means that there is something you do not know. But for a lot of people, they are so afraid to try because of what they think other people might be thinking about them. For a lot of people, they are so afraid to even fail. What exactly is failure? It's a process, right? When you try something and you don't get it, it simply means that you don't have the information to fix it yet. How many of you know how to ride a bicycle here? Bicycle. All right, thank you. Now, would you say that the first time you tried riding a bicycle, you got it right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you keep trying. You keep trying. You keep trying. Same thing happens to us in anything you want to do, your business, your relationship, your life, your friendship, whatever it is. If you try this way, if it doesn't work, you try something else. Because no human being was born with that information of how to make things work. We learn it. It is a process. All right? Now, that is understanding now. Reconditioning is when you now start to change your beliefs. Change your beliefs around the things that you want to do. How many of you have heard the statement where people say, money is evil for all evil. If I become rich, my spiritual life will probably go down. How many of you have heard that, that statement before? In the same vein, you can say that when they say that, or some people say that when you have too much money, you have too much problem, right? But in the same vein, you can say that if I have a lot of money, I have the opportunity to help a whole lot of people. It changes the whole story. Same statement, same information. And then the other say when you have a whole lot of money, you probably become a bad person. Now, have you seen rich people that are bad? Have you seen middle class people that are bad? Have you seen poor people? So, so we see, what does it have to do with money? It has absolutely nothing to do with money, right? So it is <clears throat> people's beliefs around these things that make them act according to whatever it is they are doing. Now, reconditioning is changing all of these things. Now, there are ways to change this. You can either use hypnotherapy, right? Guided meditation, spoken words, or you use, um, what's it called? What's this thing called? Um, when you say these words, um, yes, stuff like that, you continue to say it. Let me explain why and how these things work, right? Every single one of us have a brain. And the primary function of our brain is to store information. It doesn't matter the kind of information, it stores information. Whether good or bad, it stores information. Now, we as humans now create thoughts, think about the information that has been stored there, right? That leads us to feel a certain kind of way. The brain also does not know the difference between the past and the future. The brain only stores information. So if you put information, if you say things, it goes into the hair, goes back into the brain. If you say things that it has happened yet, that's the information you'll be thinking about. And then it guides your thoughts, guides the way you feel, guides the action you take, and eventually you see it from the results. That is how all of these things, and even the vision board, that's how it works. You're looking at it, and you're capturing it, it's stored there, so that's what you'll be imagining, that's what you're thinking, that's why you're creating thoughts around, and it goes towards that until you get the results. Do you understand? So you can use all of these things to recondition your mind to change the way you see situations, right? Another way is to be patient, to listen to people, to understand their perspective. When you understand people that everybody have different experiences in life, everybody have seen things differently, right? If I do this, what is this, please? Peace. Peace. 
Yeah, piece two, piece. You are you are all right, right? The answers are right. But the thing is this: you probably have seen this. Someone said this is this sign, and then you say it. You are saying it. This is two. Do you understand that your own perspective to the situation? It is life. So learn to listen to other people. First of all, understand their perspective before you respond. Most people listen to react. Mm, react. To react. They don't, to they don't listen to understand so that they can respond. Right? Now, let us go to the actual goal setting. I need that background so we we'll understand how to get this goal setting. Is there anyone here? I set a goal for this year that I want us to analyze it and break it down to make it the simplest way and how to achieve it. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone wants to share? Even if it's one out of your Anyone? Okay, let me share that. Right. My goal for this year is to launch another journal. Okay. I launched one last year. Yeah. So this year I want to launch another and it's tied to Have you started it? Yes. Okay. Now, if you have started it, um, I don't think there's a problem with that then. No, there's no problem. Yeah. I need someone that has a problem with the goal. <laughs> yeah. Now, number one reason people don't get what they want in life is because they don't know what they want, right? Number two, even if they know what they want, they don't know why they want it. Now, why you want it is a motivating factor that pushes you to want to get up every single day to achieve and pursue it, right? But exactly knowing what you want is super important. There's a difference between I want to make a whole lot of money to I want to make 100 million every single month. It's a complete difference. You need to be specific as regards what you want. Specificity is what gives you the drive. It's different if you say that I want to be known. What does it mean? Known by who? By who? School kids? By who? What exactly do you want? I need you all to write it down. What exactly is that thing that you want? Be, specific, be as specific as you can. What exactly do you want to achieve? What exactly do you want? I use this example as well sometimes. Someone is praying to God and say, God, please, I need a car. I need a car. God, give me a car. And then God, in his infinite message, looks at you, looks at one uncle that I have in one village, that one that has one rickety car that he's not using. And the manager calls you up. Okay, where are you? He said, I have something for you. And then he hands you over the car. And they are looking at the guy, like, what kind of car is this one? But well, that's what you asked for. I just want a car. You could have asked and said, God, please give me a car that I'll be happy to see every single time. Give me a car, right, that won't kill me. Give me a car I'll be proud of. Give me a car that would make my life easy. When you're going to get it, it will most likely come the way you're asking for it. So you need to be very specific. Ask God what you want. He guides your thoughts. He guides everything you want to do. If you want to make a whole lot of money in your business this year, let's put figures to it. Put numbers to it. Put time to it. 